All right, everybody, welcome back to the Get It Done podcast. I'm Joe Zanke, your host, co-founder, COO of On Demand Storage. And today I got a special guest, Aiden O'Connell of Old School Auto Care. Aiden, what's going on, man? How's it going, Joe? It's going great, buddy. It's going great. It's good to always have brain tree people on the podcast, fellow uh, fellow womps, fellow fellow entrepreneurs trying to, you know, carve out their little space in the world. So <laughs> this is going to be fun. <laughs> Oh, I love this. This is great. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, Aiden O'Connell, owner, operator, old school auto care. Uh, we do auto detailing. We specialize in mobile auto detailing, on-site auto detailing. Uh, we also do fleet washing, equipment washing. Um, we do some remote starter installation, some light window tinting here and there. Um, we're now a weather tech dealer and distributor. So getting into the retail world and, uh, nice just trying to expand and, and, and conquer. Yeah. Keep it growing, man. Keep it growing. So I've watched, I've been able to watch you guys grow and, and I, I was there when you first got your new space and, um, yeah. and you know, you told, tell me over the summer, you guys were, were hiring a few people. Um, so good for you. Good for you, buddy. It's awesome. And, um, you. you must be excited. I love the shop that you guys have over there. It looks awesome. And, uh, a lot of space. yeah, follow them on Instagram. Cause you guys, you always take some good videos of, uh, what you got going on in there. And so, so when did you recognize this as like an opportunity? How'd you get into doing auto detailing and stuff like that? So before I ever cleaned a car under my own name, I was doing it for another detail shop in Marshfield for four years, uh, maybe a little longer. Um, so I already knew what I was doing. I would already consider myself a professional. Mm -hmm. um, so I had that, you know, that advantage, but we did some mobile detailing at that business, but we did a lot of shop detailing and they also did a lot of boat detailing. And uh, he was kind of moving towards stepping away from the mobile detailing completely. And I, I was just always like, man, like, I feel like that's like the bread and butter. Like people are going to want that. And for always want that. It's going to, I think it's gonna get more and more popular. Convenience is huge. So yep. Yep. as that happened, uh, you know, I, I would have loved to work there forever. He was a great guy. I had a lot of opportunity there. And then sometimes things just don't work out. And I kind of went head first on my own into the mobile detailing and, and kind of just pushing that full force. Yeah. I mean, and you're right. I think that um, it, it's only going to get more popular with um, people are just busy and, and, you know, I've experienced it firsthand where it's like, I can't do anywhere near as good of a job as you guys do on my own car it, or it would take me, you know, hours and hours and hours where it's like, yeah. you know, just, pay for the professionalism and, and it comes out awesome. And, and you're really proud. Like once you get it back, you're like, wow, this is, this is awesome. So, I mean, um, you know, good for you for doing that. And, you know, obviously for making that entrepreneurial leap, I mean, that's a hard move. So, you know, yeah. there's some challenges, <laughs> I guess, you know, how long ago was that when you did it? Uh, about four years now. So I can say that I've been detailing for about eight years, maybe a little longer. And uh, it still takes me, Joe, uh, five or more hours to detail a car by myself, even though I've been doing it six, seven days a week for eight years. So it doesn't, uh, at a certain level, it's always going to take time. It's always going to, you know, be a pain in the A, but. Uh, yeah. Well, there's a right way and a wrong way to do things. And, and you guys yeah. like to do it the right way, which takes time. Exactly. So if you could go back to day one of, you know, four years ago when you got started, knowing what you know now, what's, um, what's some things that you tell yourself as you're diving into, uh, you know, being a business owner? Um, there's a lot of red tape and there's a lot of like filling out applications and getting on the same page with the state and the federal and, and all that stuff that you don't really think about before you dive in. And, uh, I don't know, it's kind of a, a learn as you go type thing. Like I didn't do payroll for about a year and a half, two years after I started my own thing. And, and that was just like, it was almost like starting over again, uh, with employees and payroll and just having to like fill out the like the paperwork and getting your, your numbers and your employer ID number and all that stuff. And if I, I don't know, if I guess if I could go back, I would have kind of did some more book work mm. on all just so it's not like it doesn't hit you in the face all at once. And sometimes it can be overwhelming, but uh, at the same time, learning as you go is, is one of the better ways to do it. I think. I think so too. I, I think that um, the best way to learn is to just jump right in like you did. And, and yeah. I kind of did the same thing. And I really had no idea about any of that stuff. And, and we were the exact same way. Like when it came to actually getting legitimate payroll, you know, I mean, set up and doing it the right way. We were probably a year and a half, two years in before we started running everything through that, you know, because my company is an S corp. So whenever the owners wanted to take money, we'd just take a distribution 
and it was like and we were really the only employees at the beginning and then we started getting people on and we were just like oh we'll just cut them checks but that's not really how it works yeah that's how you wish it would work you you wish everything would be so easy yep oh your camera went up oh there we go so yeah you just gotta you gotta keep things in mind like payroll taxes and and all this stuff that you know um unless you've run a business before or you know studied the art of starting a business then yeah that stuff is going to hit you in the face and so i guess you know we're pretty young in our careers if we were to start something else again um now we know all that crap to to just check off all those boxes like day one that way you don't have to worry about them anymore yeah maybe the maybe the second business will be a little easier because uh you know <laughs> so i wouldn't mind it, go ahead. at a certain point you want to just like like the way i picture it is like once i get this business like totally under control which you never know because it depends on how far you want to take it but you know, side ventures, other things like that. It makes all that easier once you've been through it once. It a hundred percent does. And you know, not, I mean, that part of it is one portion of it where it's like actually setting up the, the entity the right way, but then, you know, um, you know, what marketing techniques work, you know, you know what to spend money on versus what not to spend money on, you know, where you're going to find your customers. And a lot of the time you recognize new opportunities because of what the original ones kind of showed you, like yeah. sometimes, you know, we'll do, um, we were doing, I mean, we found our business doing student storage and now obviously you look out in the world and you're like, everybody could potentially use some sort of storage or some sort of, you know, moving service. So it's just, as you keep going, um, you realize these little things and, and, and you, you're a perfect example, you know, becoming a, uh, a weather tech vendor, um, offering the remote keys, you know, started off just doing the, the detailing and now you guys do an abundance of different things and you'll probably keep doing more and more. Yeah, definitely. And what I like about you guys, Joe, is uh, like the future is like, it looks great for companies like you, companies like me, because there's just going to be more people and there's just going to be more stuff and you need somewhere to put it. You know, there's never going to be less stuff. It's always going to be more stuff. People are going to keep buying stuff, more and more people, and you're going to need more and more space. And I think like self-storage places, places like you, I think that's just going to explode because it's just more and more people, more and more stuff. What else are you going to do with it, you know? Yeah, we're, I mean, we're hoping so when it comes to, um, it's it just the numbers aren't going to slow down, like you said. And, yes. um, and so, yeah, people always need places to put their stuff. I think people are going to, you know, I mean, this is years out, but when it comes to especially cities, like living in like, you know, smaller and smaller spaces. So yeah. it's either they're going to downsize into a smaller space and need to put the, all their other stuff somewhere or, you know, have a place to when they move into a new home, you know, store all their old stuff. It's just, it's, there's a cycle to everything. So, I mean, yeah, if, if that trend keeps going that way, um, hopefully we can grab a little piece of that, but um, yeah. Exactly, yeah, people have a ton of stuff and they don't like getting rid of it. And that's something that I've noticed being in this business is that they'd rather pay to store it than throw it out a lot of the time. And yeah, exactly. That's what you got to bank on. Yeah. <laughs> so do you have any, um, obviously you mentioned you had a, a boss that you started out working for, but do you have any like, mentors or role models in business or just in life that you've um, kind of, you know, looked up to when it came to, you know, being your own boss or, or doing the, doing things the way you want to do them and the way you're running your company right now? So, uh, well, I love every time I meet a new business owner, like a lot of my customers are business owners and I'm doing like their fleets. So they're, they're like employees, cars and things like that. And I just love when you meet a guy and you kind of just connect because like, he gets it like, like he understands he's been there before and you can always ask questions, things like that. So I have a ton of customers who I look up to and they're always giving me pointers. Um, but like a big one would probably be like Dave Portnoy. Yeah. I love, uh, I love his like enthusiasm and his motivation. Like if you watch some of the Barstool documentary videos of how they started and, and where he is now, which is like an enormous amount of growth and like he's Different just universe. doing awesome things. Yeah. So you, you watch stuff like that and you're like, you know, what separates him from me? Like, do I have that in me? And it's like, you know, it's just got to push yourself. And uh, yeah, he's, he's the big one, I think. Yeah. I mean, chasing him is not a bad idea because, even right. if you, come up, you know, <laughs> if, if, if you come up a hundred yards short, you, you got pretty far because I mean, yeah. he's, um, yeah. he's killed it. And, and the guy, you know, when it comes to marketing, he's a, he's just a genius. It's a different yeah. level uh, marketing himself. You know what I mean? There was a period of time there where I wasn't like a huge press fan. I was just like, Oh, this guy's just kind of annoying. And, but then you kind of get to know him more and more through like his videos and all this stuff. And, you know, he's genuinely a very smart, bright businessman, but he's yeah. also, uh, what he's doing now for small businesses is just like incredible. You know what I mean? It's I love that. I love, I'm huge into the giving back and the donating thing. And, uh, 
like I wish I could do more, but obviously you have to get to a certain point yourself before you can start to give back that kind of amount of money. But um, what was I going to say about Dave? So, yeah, I don't even, I'm not a huge Barstool fan. I'm more of like a Dave Fortnite fan. Yes. Yeah. You know, I would agree with you. Yeah. That's cool stuff. Oh, it's awesome. No, those guys are the best. And um, that documentary is awesome too. Um, so when it comes to getting your name out there and, and how have you, um, how have you done it really to this point? What are you doing now? Are you doing anything specific? Um, do you have any like, you know, stories of, of failed marketing attempts? I mean, this is a question that I usually like to ask because, you know, early on in my business, there's so many different ways to, to do this nowadays with, with tech moving company. I mean, uh, with, you know, your moving company, you got social media, you got, you know, online, you got Google, you got just plain old word of mouth. You got, this is a million different ways. And I struggled early on trying to figure out which one I wanted to, to, to go after and where my customers are going to be. So you got any, um, any tips or anything that you, that you've been doing that you want to do more of that, that has, that hasn't had been successful. We, well, we definitely have plenty of failures and uh, it's not all just in marketing, but that's a huge part of it. But uh, we've paid very, very little in ways of marketing, um, especially early on. Now we're doing a little bit more, but uh, for us, word of mouth is huge for a service like us. And then uh, one thing that I knew when I started that I wanted to do is kind of have like that in your face presence um, physically, like our trucks are always super shiny. And a lot of guys will tell you like, oh, it doesn't matter what the truck looks like, depends on the service you're providing. But at the same time, it's like we're dealing in in how your car looks. So I got the shiny trucks, the chrome, like I want to have my lettering in your face, eye catching stuff, because most of our customers, our new customers come when we go to somebody's driveway and they're walking their dog and they walk by or like they're the neighbors and like they're just like telling their friends and like we get a lot of calls from the highway when we're on the way to a job. Yep. And they'll say, like, one of our biggest accounts, actually, they say, oh, I saw your trucks on the highway this morning. Like, tell me about what you guys do, blah, blah, blah. And we've been working with them for, like, two to three years now. It's awesome. It's awesome. That stuff is important. I mean, don't, I, I wouldn't, especially in your business, when you're, you're, the car is is the product at the end of the day. I mean, it's what right. you're saying, I'm going to clean your car. You can't show up in a, in a not clean car. But it just presents a certain level of professionalism um that you know you want to associate with your brand you want other people to associate with it and that drive-by kind of always in your face thing you know having a good logo which you guys you know sharp um and th- yeah i mean it goes a long way and it goes a long way and th- that's a, those are traditionally old school ways of marketing but um but you can build a business on the back of referrals and just you know having people see you i mean that's that's yeah. the, just getting in front of people um and it's a similar service to ours where it's not something that people think about every day. You know, it's not like um, buying a sub or a sandwich. It's um, it's something that, you know, when you need it, you know, you yeah. look for it and you want to be there when people are looking for it, you know, and that's, yeah, uh, yeah. that's kind of yeah. like getting, getting, uh, you know, when you, the Google results and things like that, that's important too. Um, but we haven't spent a whole lot of like time and money in that way. Um, but you can see how it's important. Like you said, like when they need it, how are they going to find you? Um, and just making yourself available like instagram facebook you know we just got a website we're in our fourth year and we just got a website for our services and Mm -hmm. we were we were able to you know get enough customer base like to the point where we book out pretty far in advance without a website and now that we have the website we're in the slow season i've already noticed like a a huge uptick in uh people finding us that way and calling like through the website yeah dude it's important i mean if, if you build a website you know start building out that strategy you know, early on of, of, of being found for when people are searching for that stuff, especially in certain areas where you want to grow your business. Um, you know, but you got to build to that point. You can't start off doing everything at once. I mean, um, yeah. everything costs money. And yeah. <laughs> you know, that was one thing that we learned early on. Like we started doing these pay-per-click ads, like right out of the gate when, and, and we got up to spending all this money and, you know, you really, if you don't have uh, a big pool of money to spend, then uh, yeah. you got to be careful because, early on in those campaigns, there's a lot of learning, you know what I mean? There's a lot of like the data comes in, people start to call and it's like, are these the right calls? Are these people that I want? You know what I mean? Yeah. Are they even calling the right, the right person? Yeah. Right. Exactly. right. But then once it gets, you know, up and running, it starts to be better. But again, you got to be at a, a different, you got to be at a point in your business where you can say, okay, this costs this much per month. Like, do I have six months of runway that I'm willing to try? Because at the end of the day, once you get to that six month, I think you'll step success but um you don't want to do it for like you know 
a month and a half and just wait and just th throw money down the toilet. So that's yeah. just something I've learned from my experiences, especially. But I like the way that you guys are doing it. And, and word of mouth is the best customers you can possibly get. I mean, it's just people yeah. watching for you. You know, they're basically making the sale for you, which is great. Right. So one of my last questions for you, you know, obviously dealing with um, COVID has been tough as business owners, you know, in all different types of walks of life. Um, but, you know, have you learned anything about yourself or about your company or, you know, that, that I guess you could spin to be kind of a positive little bit of a word of encouragement to anybody listening, you know, that, that this, that dealing with this type of situation has taught you? Well, you have to be willing to sacrifice COVID or no COVID. You have to be willing to make, you know, how much are you willing to sacrifice to keep the business where it's supposed to be? Uh, so I, I, I put those sacrifices on like a personal level where I'll make those sacrifices on like myself as opposed to my guys or like the quality of the business we're providing or the service. So I've definitely made a couple of sacrifices this year that I won't get into now, but just to, to get through this year and the, maybe the following year. But um, I don't know. It, it, it definitely makes you stronger as a company if you're going to survive this. And uh, I don't know. We didn't get any terms like in terms of relief we didn't get anything from the state of the fed and i didn't apply the first time around i probably should have but you know we took a hit early and then as a cleaning company the summer ended up being great for us um we implemented some some like human coronavirus killers and, and some sanitation things and we're doing like some police departments with sanitizing cruisers things like that uh we're not making a killing from that but it's definitely uh helping us get through oh yeah sure. definitely definitely I mean, look, at the end of the day, you know, that's um, as a business owner, you, you seem like someone who is um, is, is going to be able to weather the storm. And I think that your mentality and just the service, like you said, you, that you guys provide is is great. So, I mean, but yeah, I mean, sometimes as, as the owner, you know, you look around, you're like, well, you know, I've, I'm responsible for, you know, putting putting money in people's pockets. I'm responsible for um, doing right by my customers. I mean, the worst thing you could possibly do is probably get a lot cheaper in how you provide your service and then start providing worse service because now it's not only are you dealing with a pandemic but you're dealing with less happy customers who at the end of the day referrals are are the name of the game in both moving and and what you do and so yeah. you're doing the right thing um it's challenging man it's challenging it's one of those things where you know um it, it's the, the you're the captain of the ship but you know the captain of the ship is going to be the one that um that at the end of the day, once you get through it and once you get back into, you know, clear waters is going to be the one that, um, you know, hopefully can take what they learned from this type of situation, take what they've learned over the years of doing the business and, and be the one that en inevitably ends up benefiting, you know, turning it on its head and benefiting from it in the long run. Yeah. I love, I love the weight on the shoulders of having employees, like having other people rely on you. That, that, that's what gets me up in the morning is like, it's no longer just like me, cleaning cars and trying to make a killing and make it make some money that way. It's like, I got guys that depend on me now. You know, we had uh, four full-time guys this summer. That's the most we ever had. And it yep. was in the middle of the pandemic. And so we're, we're technically growing in, in a pandemic year. And uh, that was, uh, you know, that was exciting. Cause it's like a lot of people, you know, a lot of guys are suffering and then we took what we were suffering at the beginning and tried to turn it around and, and uh, end up doing all right. So. Good man. That's like good to hear. In now, you know? I can't, I couldn't agree with you more too. I mean, um, sometimes you push up against, you know, push up into a corner. It's, it's when you, uh, operate at your best, you know, and that's yeah. having employees, taking people on, you know, that's how you're going to grow your company. But every time you do that, it's like a little, it's a step forward and a step back. You know what I mean? You gotta, you know, and, and then you just got to keep making those steps forward, uh, step back a little bit financially, you know, as a commitment, but step forward in the sense that you're making progress, you're growing, you're growing, you're putting, you know, you got two or two, three, four crews out there on a day, you know, yeah. doing all sorts of different stuff. And it's just fun to watch, you know what I mean? And, and sometimes I know personally as a business owner, you, you're, all this new stuff is going on. And like from the outside world, it's like, oh, wow, you know, Joe and Aiden, you know, look at them, they're moving up in it. But it's tough to like, when you're in the middle of it, like look back and appreciate it. <laughs> and, be yeah. like, and, and what some people don't get, you know, they haven't ventured on their own yet, or they, you know, they're just not familiar with like owning a business or the entrepreneurial lifestyle is, uh, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. It's not all, you know, Oh, look how good we're doing. Sometimes you try to make it look like that because you don't want people to see, you know, the sacrifices you're making behind the scenes, but it's not always, you know, bread and butter. No, no, it's not. No, most of it is, you know, late nights and early mornings and, and being the last one there and, and, and yeah, just 
digging through a car, like you said, for seven hours, you know, yeah, the car, the, the product might come out amazing at the end. It's like, but yeah, I just, I was just in there for six hours, you know, scrubbing and it on my hands. That's, that's a huge disconnect we have between us and the customers. You know, they'll drop the car off, come back six hours later. It looks awesome, but they don't see what happens in between that, you know? Yep. Yep. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, keep providing that top notch service because that's, what's going to separate you from the rest. And that's what, um, I think that, you know, especially in what you guys do, um, I, I would vouch for you. You know, you guys have done my cars before. It's been awesome. Um, I know my, some of my partners are starting to use it now too, which is great. And so, um, no, I can, I can totally vouch for what you guys do. And, uh, I, I like the approach that you're taking, you know, not blaming it. Just, it's always look in the mirror, you know what I mean? What can I do to be better or how can I get us out of this? You know, if it's a, if it's a tough time. Um, but yeah, that, that, um, that struggles with is, is what inevitably will <clears throat> hopefully make us, make us great one day. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. I, I've been doing a lot. This is my last question. Typically for all my guests, I've been trying to read more. Um, I, you know, just, I think every time I pick up a book, I learn something new, but also running out of things to watch on TV. So, um, have you read anything good recently or throughout, you know, your uh, career that maybe you could say you'd recommend to, uh, the audience pick up? I don't do a whole lot of reading, Joe, but, uh, <laughs> That's all right. That's I, all right. Do, I, I kept all my, I, I did four years. I didn't graduate, but I did four years at college and I kept all my management books and my business books. And sometimes I'll go back and look at those for reference. Um, so if, if you have those at your, you know, at your expense, I'd use those. Um, oh, definitely. You can learn a lot in those textbooks. Yeah. And if you find a good documentary about any, any documentary or movie that I like to watch where, it, you know, the guy's just killing it and it ends up in a good spot, like from point A to point B, like even that movie about like the founder where they did the, the uh, McDonald's thing. Cause I'm, I'm yeah. in a way on a McDonald's car detailing, which is like almost impossible. But if you can get to that point, then, you know, the sky's the limit, but you know, not exactly a, a completely positive movie, but just like, like taking things away that you can take away from a movie like that. And then you're getting what you need out of it. Well, documentaries are even better sometimes than, than watching the book. It goes a little bit deeper or it explains things that maybe um, stuff like books and movies leave out. So uh, yeah. maybe I'll pivot that question moving forward to be more documentary slash book. I'm, I'm just, I've never been a big reader. <laughs> no, I yeah. Once I got out of school, I put the books down for the most part. Hey, the Audible books are pretty good though. If you ever get that yeah. thing, Audible is awesome. Um, I was never a book on tape guy until I got that. And now it's like anything, you know, all this information at the palm of your hand. I just read, read McConaughey's book. Um, and that, that book's unbelievable. I mean, that guy's the man, but it was basically just him yeah. narrating it. So it made it a lot easier to read than me picking up a page, <laughs> falling asleep you, after, you know, a chapter or two. Do you do any of the guys like Ty Lopez or any of those guys? Do you like, you know, like the, the business motivator guys, like they do the speaking and all that stuff. Um, when it comes to business motivating guys, I not time Lopez, but you know, I like listening to Tim Ferriss. He's a good, um, he's, he's an animal. Um, yeah. Jocko Willink's pretty cool. I mean, he's the guy that was a Navy SEAL and now he does like motivational speaking slash talks about leadership and management. Um, so I like to try to, you know, lean on those guys and a yeah. lot of what they do, you know, Tim Ferriss, if you look at his podcast, I mean, he interviews other business owners, um, a lot of the time, you know are the top of what they do. Um, so he kind of inspired me a little bit with this podcast is just like, you know, talk to business owners, talk to people who are doing all sorts of different things. And this is probably like my 60th episode at this point. It really is like it's yeah. flying by. Um, but I've learned so much just getting, like you said, you know, once every time you talk to a business owner, like someone else is doing something or, or they've been doing something for 20, 15, 20 years, it's yeah. like you can pick up so much from a short amount of time and talking to them and learn. So that's kind of what I've been trying to do is just, you know, emulate him in a way, uh, even like Rogan, you know I mean? You, you look at Joe Rogan, he talks to you know, a million different types of people. Um, yeah. but you know, just be curious, George, always kind of get out there and then try to try to learn something new from someone else who's doing, um, something at a really high level. Yeah. I wrote down some names. I'll, I'll, I'll send them to you after of, uh, like some guys that I've met, like a couple of local business owners that just have like really cool stories and maybe you can get them on after, but, uh, yeah, well, I, guess, I always like to follow up and, 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 and get, that's how I typically get my guests is I just ask yeah. previous guests. So I'd be, I'd love to talk to anybody that you, that you'd recommend. Yeah, that'd be great. Well, look, man, this has been awesome. I appreciate all your insight. Um, I'm glad to hear that you guys are, are growing 
and doing well. And I, I love seeing it and um, I'll recommend you in any way we can. Where can um, anybody listening go and find you? Well, we're on Facebook, old school auto care. Uh, we just got the website up www.oldschoolautocare.com. We're on Instagram at old school auto care. Um, that's really the main three right there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And so, uh, yeah, hit up Aiden, you know, they do a fantastic job on the car. It looks brand new once you, once you get out of there. Um, and Aiden, thanks a lot, man. This has been awesome. Thanks for having me, Joe. Take care.